Hi, I'm Professor Baldwin, and today I'm going to teach you how to solve radical equations. There are four steps to solving radical equations. Step one, very important, you have to isolate the radical. You can't solve a radical equation until you have isolated the radical on one side of the equal sign. It has to be by itself. The next step is to raise each side of the equation to a power equal to the index of the radical. That's because if you take the square root of a, that's the same as a to the power of 1 half. So if you square that radical, it's the same as squaring a to the power of 1 half. And a to the power of 1 half squared, you use the power property, and that's a to the power of 1 or a. So the opposite operation for the square root is to square. The cube root is to cube and so on. So whatever the index of your radical is, that's that little number on the radical, that is what you need to raise each side of the equation to. That's going to lead to an equation and you're going to just solve that equation. It'll be a linear equation or a polynomial. In step four, you have to check the potential solutions and then write your answer in a solution set. Okay, let's do a couple of examples. Example one, the square root of x plus two equals eight. First, let's isolate that square root of x. Subtract two and we have the square root of x is equal to 6. The next step is to square both sides because we have the square root. To get rid, of, get rid of the square root, we square. So the left side becomes the radicand, just x, and the right is 6 squared, which is 36. We're not done. You have to check. Very important to check these as important as it is to check those rational expressions. Just substitute it back in for your variable and verify that it stays equal. The square root of 36 is 6. Well, is 6 plus 2 equal to 8? It sure is. So we know that x equals 36 is the solution, so we write it as a solution set 36. Look at example two. To isolate the radical, we need to add three to both sides. We'll have nine equals the square root of two z minus three. We have a square root, so we square both sides. The left side becomes 81, and the right side we're left with just the radicant, two z minus three. Now we solve for z. Add three to both sides. We have 84 is equal to 2z. Divide by two. So our possible solution is z equals 42. But we need to check. So we're gonna substitute back in. Is six equal to the square root of two times 42 minus 3 minus 3. Well, 6 equal to the square root of 84 minus 3. Keep going, 84 minus 3 is 81. The square root of 81 is 9. Is 6 equal to 9 minus 3? Yes. So we know that 42 is the solution so we write it as a solution set. Okay, let's look at number three. Isolate that radical. Subtract three from both sides. We have the square root of x minus 16 equals negative three. Square both sides, the left leaves us the radicant, x minus 16, and the right gives us nine. Add 16 to both sides, and our solution is x equals 25. 
Let's check that solution. So 3 plus the square root of 25 minus 16, we want to know if that equals 0. 3 plus the square root of 9 equal to 0. What's the square root of 9? It's 3. Is 3 plus 3 equal to 0? No, that says 6 equals 0. No, it worked out mathematically, that's because we squared a negative. But it doesn't work when we check it. So 25 is not a solution, so our solution set is the empty set. There's no answer here. How about example four? Step one's already done for us. Our radical is isolated. So we need to square both sides. Notice when we square the left, we end up with the radicand. On the right, we're squaring a binomial. So we're gonna end up with a perfect square trinomial y squared minus 4y plus 4. Let's subtract y squared from both sides and slowly combine those like terms. We get negative 8 equals negative 4y plus 4. How about we subtract 4 from both sides? Slowly isolate that y negative 12 equals negative 4y. Okay, divide by negative 4, and we get 3 equals y, or y equals 3. Well, we need to check. We are checking 3 squared minus 8 is equal to 3 minus 2 or 9 minus 8 equals 1. The square root of 1 equals 1. Is that true? Well, the square root of 1 is 1. So 1 equals 1 is true. So our solution is 3. Right? Remember, your solution set is always what you solved for. It's not what you checked. Let's look at another example. We need to isolate our radical. Well, we have a negative 2a, so let's add 2a to both sides. That gives us 2 times the square root of 6a plus 7 equals 2a. That radical isn't isolated yet because we have 2 on the outside. So we need to divide both sides by 2. We have the square root of 6a plus 7 equals a. Square both sides. The left side, you get the radicand, 6a plus 7. And the right side, you get a squared. Let's move everything to the right-hand side. So subtract 6a and subtract 7. That'll give us 0 equals a squared minus 6a minus 7. Or a squared minus 6a minus 7 equals 0. That's a trinomial. So let's factor that trinomial. The two values that multiply to negative 7 but add to negative 6 would be negative 7 and a positive 1. Those are our binomial factors. You use your zero product property, a minus seven equals zero, or a equals seven, a plus one equals zero, or a equals negative one. So we need to come back up here and we need to check. But we ended up with two solutions, so we need to check both. We're going to check a equals 7 and a equals negative 1. Let's start with a equals 7. We have 2 times the square root of 6 times 7 plus 7 minus 2 times 7. We want to know if that equals 0. 
Let's simplify inside the radical first. 6 times 7 is 42 plus 7. On the outside, we have 2 times 7. Continue to simplify. That radicand is now 49. And we can take the square root of 49, which is 7. So we have 2 times 7, which is 14, minus 14 is equal to 0. That's correct. So we know that a equals 7 is a solution. Let's check a equals negative 1. 2 times the square root of 6 times negative 1 plus 7 minus 2 times negative 1. Does that equal 0? Simplify that radicand, negative 6 plus 7. On the outside, negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. Continue simplifying that radicand. We get a radicand of 1. Remember, the square root of 1 is 1, so we have 2 plus 2 is equal to 0. Does 4 equal 0? No. That's not true. So a equals negative 1 gets tossed, and the only solution is a equals 7. So we do the solution set with just 7. See why it's so important to check those answers? What if you have an application example that involves a square root? Here we're told the distance d in miles that an observer can see on a clear day is approximated by d equals 49 fortieths times the square root of h, where h is the height of the observer in feet. If Carrie can see 24.5 miles, how far above ground is her eye level? Well, 24.5 miles is our value for d. And we're asked how far above ground is her eye level. That would be h. So h is what we're trying to find. Let's substitute into our equation what we know. We know 24.5 equals 49 over 40 times the square root of h. We need to isolate that radical. Well, we can multiply by the reciprocal, 40 over 49. That simplifies out on the right-hand side and leaves just the square root of h. And on the left, 40 over 49 times 24.5 is 20. Then to get rid of the square root, you square both sides. So we get h equals 400. Well, remember what h is measured in. h is measured in feet. So the answer here is 400 feet. Or, if Carrie can see 24.5 miles, then her eye level is 400 feet above ground. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video helpful, and I hope you'll go check out some of my other math videos.